Happy Wednesday, April 17th, everyone. Hunter here again at Weather on the Go. And in today's weather forecast, we are going to be looking at more storm chances throughout the rest of this week. Some of them producing some severe weather along the way as well. We'll also be looking at widespread frost and freeze conditions coming into play this weekend, especially between Friday, April the 19th and Sunday, April the 21st. And also in the long range, when is our next chance for significant severe weather? We'll answer that question later on in today's weather forecast. Thank you all for joining here on this Wednesday morning. If you are new here to Weather on the Go and not a subscriber to the channel, make sure to hit the subscribe subscribe button down below for detailed, accurate weather forecasts throughout the entire year. Also, be sure to press the like button, the thumbs up button down below. It helps out more than you know. So let's look here at yesterday. Very busy day for severe weather across the Midwest down into the mid-Missouri Valley here. So far, we have 17 tornadoes reported from Nebraska and Iowa down into Kansas, Missouri there, and even into western Illinois. We have several reports of wind and hail as well, so definitely a very busy day on your Tuesday, and another busy day potentially over the next couple of days as well. Our occluding low pressure system near Rochester, Minnesota today will sweep eastward into portions of Ontario as we go into your Thursday time frame, and a new low pressure system will be developing down near the central plains on Thursday. So this is going to create more severe weather chances as we do move forward. So through today, we do have a slight risk in a couple of areas. The first area over here into near the Kansas City region, northeastern portions of Kansas, western Missouri. That's mainly for hail and wind, but we have a slight risk over here into the Southern Great Lakes and the Ohio Valley from Detroit back here towards Fort Wayne, Indiana, Toledo, Cleveland, getting down further south there into Columbus and Chillicothe, Cincinnati over here toward Parkersburg into West Virginia and also Pittsburgh. In Pennsylvania, we have that slight risk with a marginal risk extending down into the Music City in Nashville, even getting into Huntsville there and even portions of Tupelo, Mississippi this afternoon. And then as we go into Thursday, we have a slight risk again for from the Dallas-Fort Worth area there up into portions of southeastern Oklahoma, southwestern Arkansas, and then the main slight risk up here into Illinois, Missouri, into portions there of the surrounding areas of Indiana, Kentucky, uh, Arkansas, into western portions of Tennessee as we go into Thursday. Let's look at the storm chances for today. We got our occluding low pressure system up across the upper Midwest. Rainfall, some non-severe thunderstorms across the upper Great Lakes region as they enter into Ontario. And you can see here the cold front. We could spark some showers and storms. Not everybody will see them today, so do note that they will be scattered. But if you do get under one of those stronger thunderstorm cells, they could produce damaging winds in excess of 60 miles per hour, quarter size hail, and perhaps an isolated tornado. And then as we go into tonight, you can see that all moves off to the east. A new low pressure system begins to develop across the central plains. This will be the next focal point for storm chances and severe weather tonight into your Thursday. Some heavier rain moving across the Chicagoland area down there towards St. Louis, watching out for some stronger storms at times through the day on Thursday. And then into Thursday night, we could see some showers and storms all the way from Corpus Christi here in Texas, all the way up to the Detroit region. So definitely we're watching out from the Great Lakes, the Ohio Valley, down through the Tennessee Valley and the deep south into the coastal Texas vicinity through your Thursday night for some storm chances. And some of those could be strong to severe. We'll have to keep an eye on that. Then going into Friday, another low end day for severe weather across the Carolinas there, North Georgia and Northern Alabama. That's just a level one out of five. That's a marginal risk of severe weather. Hail and wind will be your main threat there. The tornado risk on Friday is exceptionally low. And then looking at the rainfall totals here going through the start of the weekend through Saturday, April the 20th, you can see some decent beneficial rains across portions of the eastern U.S. here from the Great Lakes down there into the deep south. Some areas may see a quarter of an inch of rain. Other areas that see more numerous thunderstorm clusters move through could see over one to two inches worth of rain. So it's kind of the luck of the draw type of setup here for if you do get a thunderstorm, you will get a lot of rain. If you don't, then you won't. So definitely seeing that that through the weekend time frame 
But looking here, more importantly, at the weekend for a cold front standpoint, because yes, this will be a true cold front, folks. It's going to be bringing down that colder Canadian air mass from portions of Saskatchewan, Manitoba, and Ontario, Canada, down into the center of the country here of the U.S. later this week. But we'll feel the heart of that cold air by Saturday and Sunday here this weekend as that cold front travels all the way south through the Gulf Coast and the southeast coast through the weekend time frame with those well below low normal temperatures. Let's look at our morning lows on Friday morning here. Late this week, heading off to work or school. It's going to be chilly up here. We're definitely going to have to bundle up across the upper Midwest, the high plains back here to the northern Rockies as we'll be waking up to temperatures in the 20s to low 30s and a hard freeze if not a frost across these areas. That becomes a little bit more widespread to start your weekend on Saturday morning. Notice the Twin Cities up here at 29 degrees. 22 degrees with a hard freeze in Rapid City, South Dakota, even 20, uh, 29 degrees in the Sioux City region. Sioux Falls up there into the upper Midwest on Saturday morning, and then that continues into Sunday morning as well. Places like Chicago to Milwaukee and Green Bay will likely have frost and freeze concerns all the way through the weekend. So again, make sure it is growing season. It has started to cover up any sensitive vegetation, sensitive plants across these regions, especially in the north. So here's the the frost and freeze forecast. If you're in the light blue down here into portions of the Southern Plains, the Red River Valley, down to the deep south and portions there of the Carolinas, we'll have probably a possible chance for frost and freeze. If you're in the medium blue here across the Central Plains, the Midwest, the Ohio Valley, the Mid-Atlantic or the New England coast here, we definitely have a more likely chance for frost and freeze conditions, but obviously in the darker blue here, very likely chances for the high plains, including the Dakotas up there into eastern Montana, getting through the upper Midwest there, including Wisconsin, into portions of the UP of Michigan, lower Michigan, and interior New England there into portions, say, of Buffalo up to Watertown, New York. Those areas have a very likely chance of seeing frost and freeze as we go between Friday morning on the 19th of April and Sunday morning on the 21st of April. So definitely three days worth of frost and freeze potential. Now, if you're not a fan of the colder weather or the chillier weather for this time of year, well, hang tight because as we go through next week, we're going to have a ridge of high pressure start to build out west as we go into early weeks. So early week, still going to be chilly there as we go into that Monday, Tuesday time frame out east, a little bit warmer out west with that ridge developing. Well, that ridge by the middle of next week will develop stronger and actually push a little bit further to the east here. So that means the ridge of high pressure will be centered across the Rockies and the plains by next Wednesday and then by next week on Friday that ridge will be right overhead of the heartland of the country the corn belt the upper midwest and all the way down through the plains with a new trough starting to develop across the pacific southwest for southern california into the western four corners regions of utah and arizona and you can see through next week monday april 22nd through friday april 26th our temperature anomalies when you average all five of those days out next week will be below normal temperatures for the east and above normal temperatures across the west here and we are tracking some very tranquil weather as we go into next week not really much happening here as we go into monday a little disturbance here across the high plains into the central plains likely not even producing any severe weather there as we go into Tuesday next week, maybe that disturbance moves into the Midwest here and the Great Lakes. That could bring us a shower or a thunderstorm here. Nothing to write home about there. As we go into Wednesday, that cold front will move to the south. High pressure working back in across the north there, bringing more sunshine and some warmer temperatures. As that ridge of high pressure, like I mentioned, does start to get underway. Thursday, pretty dry across the country. Nothing really happening. Maybe a little bit of rain out west with that trough beginning to move into the west coast there especially for Northern California and Oregon. And then as we go into Friday next week, the ridge is overhead. Remember that. The ridge is overhead here, the heartland of the country, the upper Midwest, the Corn Belt, all the way down here to the Gulf Coast. A trough will be moving in, like I mentioned, across California into the Four Corners region. And this trough will actually start to develop a low pressure system on the lee side of the Rockies by next Friday or at least next weekend time frame. And a pretty strong low pressure at that, a 990 
93 potentially there into eastern Colorado. That's going to pull a lot of moisture from the Gulf of Mexico further north again, similar to our past system that we saw here. And you can see dew points will be rising into the 50s and 60s, perhaps as far north as Nebraska, but maybe even South Dakota, Iowa, and Minnesota by next Friday. This is going to yield some stronger instability, especially across the Great Plains here. And that could lead to some severe weather potential, possibly even our next significant chance for severe weather about that Friday, April 26th, going into Saturday the 27th and Sunday the 28th time frame of April. So late April does look very active again. We'll have to keep an eye on that and rightfully so. Here's severe weather climatology for late April according to our friends over here at the Storm Prediction Center across the southern and central plains. We do have a more likely chance in late April of seeing severe weather. So that is climatology for that part of the month in the last week of April. So we'll keep an eye out to the forecast on that. Well thank you guys so much for watching. Short and sweet video here. Make sure to follow me on Twitter for more weather information. I will have a Facebook weather page started here very, very soon. I'm working hard on that as well. So thank you guys for all the support that you guys give me every single day. Thanks for all the new subscribers out there. I genuinely appreciate it. Hope of, Thank you guys so much for watching and I hope everyone has a wonderful rest of their Wednesday out there.